Welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us here today. In recent years, the rise of Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, has sparked not only adoration, but a surprising level of animosity, particularly from women of a certain age and demographic whether it's in the US or the UK or Australia, who at first glance might be expected to champion another woman breaking barriers within the monarchy. The puzzling alignment between these women who attack Megan and those who support figures like the former president of the US who's trying to win again Despite his open misogynistic behavior, points to a deeper psychological and societal conundrum. Why would women subscribe to misogyny, a system of oppression that inherently harms them to attack someone like Megan? And what cultural forces drive this phenomenon. So that's what our episode is about today. We'll try and do our best to explain it, or maybe I'll just present the sort of research that I've, 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 I've done. Also, we will say a prayer for the unexpected, get a few updates. I'm sure some of it you folks already know, but I'll just present it anyways. And um, to all of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for subscribing. And to all of our legacy people, thank you for always being here and for always listening whenever you can. Uh, thank you for all your comments. I love them, love them, love them. Okay, so let's get, let's get this episode on the road. And in the news, in celebration of International Day of the Girl, the Archwell Foundation, Pivotal Ventures, and the Oprah Winfrey Charitable Foundation announced their contributions to support a partnership between Girls Inc. and At Half the Story, aimed at providing digital wellness programming for young girls in underserved communities across America. This new educational um, initiative well equipped girls with the essential tools to strive in the digital age while fostering uh, healthier more balanced relationships with technology that is just absolutely beautiful i love watching megan with, with with those kids too because i can just imagine like they're going because <laughs> I, I when i see when i watch them i think of my nieces and my nieces would go that's the princess. That's the princess. Like they totally would. <laughs> so that's what I think. These beautiful little girls are just like, we are going to hang out with the princess. And she just looks radiant and beautiful and wonderful. And well, we hop over now to Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, in honor of World Mental Health Day. Prince Harry and Jonathan Hult, author of the New York Times bestseller, The Anxious Generation, engaged in a discussion about the impact of social media on young people's mental health. Their conversation ex explored Hult's, and I'm, I'm butchering his last name, so do forgive me, um, his research on the 
effects of screen and devices on Generation Z, as well as um, actionable steps to combat the, 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 the rise in mental health issues among teens. So to read the rest uh, on Sussex.com, if you go there, you'll get all the information. Listen, watch this, watch the video, watch the presentation, um, sort of the interview that Prince Harry did. And by the way, like between us, should he not get his own like show, like his own special? And and like I'm not joking, like he's a really great interviewer. I love the questions he asks. I love his follow-ups. I love how he allows space for the person to respond. He's really good at it. Really good at it. Meet you on this uh, World Mental Health Day. Oh, Prince Harry, what an honor to meet you. Um, thank you for spending time with me and having this discussion about your book, The Anxious Generation, um, which, funny enough, aligns uh, very well with uh, the insight sessions that we've been doing with young people um, in, in numerous different countries. Perhaps the best way to start is for the people that haven't heard of your book or haven't even had a chance to read your book, what is the anxious generation about and what is the what is the clearest most important message and takeaway from it the anxious generation is about a big change that happened for uh, for young people born after 1995. there's never been such a sharp generational shift uh, those who were born in the late 90s and afterwards uh, it turned out when they hit puberty they had very very high rates of anxiety depression self-harm and suicide all of those went up and they all went up right around 2012 2010 to 2012, 2012 in that region everything goes up not just in America, but all over the English-speaking world and in Scandinavia and some other parts as well. And then what happens is between 2010 and 2015, the technology changes such that young people, they trade in their flip phones for smartphones. Mm. And now with, with a front-facing camera, high-speed internet, a million apps that are competing with each other to hook kids' attention. And so if you went through- All right, Cuba, let's board our 747 private jet and head over to that island. And let's see what's happening over there. Prince William and the Princess of Wales, Catherine, on Thursday carried out their first joint public engagement since the end of Kate's chemotherapy by meeting the bereaved parents of the victims that were unalived um, in the seaside town of Southport. The royal couple spent about 90 minutes meeting privately with um, the families of Bebe King, um, El Eloise Dot Sancombe and Alice da Silva Aguilar, who were unalived at the Taylor Swift theme dance class on July 29th. There are things I could say, but I'm not gonna say it. I'm just let them let them do their thing. Okay, so we'll stay right here on the island and um, the uh, King Charles III and the concert have uh, said that they're heading to Australia um, towards the end of this month, I believe. The king also said that he will not stand in the way if Australia wishes to replace him as country's head of state. Um, he said that he doesn't want to, he's, he's, he's adopting an anti-confrontational approach to the Australian Republican campaign. Oh well, it happens. Do you do you folks not feel, because I feel it, so I don't know, that anything coming out out of those palaces just seems a little bit odd or a little bit weird, like there's something happening behind the, the multitude of closed doors and, and, and medieval walls, because when I looked at William and Kate, something is not right with them. And it hasn't been right since, you know, Kingston, you know, the one that was found, injury to the head, something, and I'm not saying anything here. I'm just saying since around that date, things have been odd. And the two of them look like they have aged 10 to 15 years. 10 to 15 years. It's just, I don't know. Oh, well. And you know what is really sad is that I think, I really do, that all of this 
is unnecessary. It's so unnecessary. If they are not happy together, let's say something did happen, right? Let's say all the rumors we've heard about Willie are true. And he doesn't want to be with, with her, but they have... Listen, I don't know what you negotiated or what you didn't. We are in new times. We it's, it's, it's a new era. If he were to just make an announcement and say, you know, Catherine and I love each other and we come to the decision to, you know, continue raising our children but part ways um i mean there's going to be a couple of people who may cry but if that's going to produce a happier um heir and he's able to be with whomever he wants to be with like why repeat the same crap that your dad did and you know your mother becoming unalive and now you're doing the same thing to your brother like, like, why? Who are the people who are advising you that this is the right thing to do? Because nowhere in the Constitution or in, in, um, in the laws or rules or regulations or anything like, like that, like, when, when the whole thing came up with Diane and all, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. Well, listen, there was a million things we couldn't do. And for some reason, somehow... The mistress, the one with the tampon, is sitting on the throne and people are calling her queen. When everyone thought that would be impossible. So let me say this. If that was possible, everything else is possible. If you don't want to be with a woman, announce it. Go, go your separate ways. He looks miserable. She looks miserable. And then they want it like... Project all this stuff onto Harry and Meghan. Leave Harry and Meghan alone. Leave them alone. I know what I'm going to do next is going to be a, a little bit controversial, I guess. But um, I, 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 I'm okay with it. And... I'm going, I've selected a few of the not so great comments that were left. Um, these are the ones that I, I'm willing to put here for us to see. And I want to read some of them. Um, the others that are, that are quite vile and, 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 and disgusting, disturbing, those have been deleted already. But I, I want us to to pray for these people with, with, with all sincerity that with, with every ounce of sincerity from my heart because as I was getting prepared for 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 today's episode some something as I was going through comments and stuff something hit me I don't know what it was but something hit me and I, I just kept saying, God, show them the light, like, please. And then the thought was just, well, let's bring them into the light and let's pray for them. So I'll just read a couple from here. And, and again, this, these, this, this is the super mild ones, okay? So one person wrote, uh, Megan is the queen of bullying. She has earned that title fair and square. Another delusional nutcase, meaning me. Um, a butt farm channel, so gross, supporting slavery and SA. Can't believe this exists. Okay, I don't think I support any of those things. Um, bullying staff is not pro-human right on the planet. Whomever you are, bullying is bullying. Okay. History will not be kind to Megan for sure. No one in Hollywood wants anything to do with her, but she is too dense in the head to know it. She thinks as long as she remains her duchy title, people will frown and grovel at her. Yet 
she's the one frowning and groveling for a chance just to grace the red carpet where she never even been invited. Talk about trying to stay relevant. And it's funny because I've seen this, this same comments on other channels, right? Um, Prince Harry, as a military officer, chose to betray his queen and country. He is no more a royal than myself. I will dare to differ. Um, wow. So saying Harry betrayed his queen and country is considered hate. And do not, and, and, and do you deliberately deleted my comment? This made, this make this video a complete sham. Harry betrayed, Harry betrayed, uh, uh his queen and country nothing about harry is royal well he, he was born a royal so no matter what he does he still be a royal and and the the, the, the other ones are there i i i am to, going to just ask you to let's to to, to let's pray I, I know for some of you me posting this is 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 against what you what you believe in and i would ask just 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 pray for these for these people whether 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 these are bots that are being controlled by someone else and just spewing out hatred or whether it's a real person behind those comments i'll ask just within your own prayers just dear heavenly father we come before you today with heavy hearts, lifting up those who are lost in pain and darkness, those words and actions reflect the hurt they carry inside. We have seen the harshness of their words, accusing Prince Harry of betraying his family, denying Megan her dignity, and spreading lies about their lives. Father, we know that behind these hateful words lies a deep wound, a wound that only your love can heal. They speak of betrayal, of broken hearts, and of titles lost. But Lord, we know that it is not Megan or Harry they truly rage against. It is the pain they carry from their own lives. We lament for whatever has happened in their past that has hardened them, has hardened their hearts, causing them to lash out in anger. We are sorry that evil has touched them and stripped away their hope. Lord, we pray for healing for those who believe that spreading hatred will bring them peace. Help them see that no matter how many hurtful comments they make, no matter how much they try to tear others down, it will not heal their pain or bring them the comfort they seek. Only love, forgiveness, and healing can restore their broken spirit. We feel compassion for them, Lord, because we know they are suffering. We ask you to touch their hearts to help them find healing. For the child within them who was wounded still is. Give them the strength to let go of bitterness, to seek your light, and to discover the peace that comes from healing and love. Help them understand, Lord, 
that Meghan and Harry or anyone else they target with their hate is not the source of their pain. The anger they feel is a reflection of their own hurt. Guide them to see that it is time to stop spreading darkness and to begin seeking healing for their own soul. In your infinite love and mercy, bring them peace. Show them the way to forgiveness, both for others and for themselves, so they may be free from the burden of hate. May your love light their path towards wholeness and joy. Thank you, Lord. In your holy name we pray, amen. The Royal Vota, a term referred to reporters and correspondents dedicated to covering the British monarchy, serves as a small economy within the UK media landscape. Many of its most vocal members, particularly women, claim to defend the traditions and dignity of the ro uh, British royal family. But in reality, their focus has often shifted towards tearing down Meghan Markle, an outsider who married into the institution. The women, like their male counterparts, have built careers on scrutinizing royal figures. But Meghan seems to draw a particular kind of anger. Her mixed race heritage, um, her outspoken nature, and non-conformity to traditional royal roles challenge the very fabric of the institution these reporters uphold. Through their reporting and commentary, these women weave a narrative of Megan as a villain, right? The person who is there to, there's a word in Spanish, it's, it's usurpar, no? And what's the equivalent of usurpar in English? I think it's usurper, or am I inventing that? Usurper. Okay, I'll look it up after. <laughs> I think it is usurper. Um, U S U R P E R. You know what? I, I should really stick to my notes. <laughs> okay, I might just <laughs> erase this part. Meanwhile, um, they elevate Kate Middleton, the picture of what they perceive to be a proper royal woman, silent, poised, and conforming to established norms. But the question remains, why would women in these positions who, who, who have likely faced sexism in their careers weaponize the same misogyny against Megan? The, the answer lies in a, in a combination of self-preservation and ingrained societal roles. These women have spent years working within a male-dominated industry and monarchy. And Megan's arrival threatens the status quo that they learned to navigate. By tearing her down, they reaffirm their place within that system. See what I mean? Now, beyond the royal rota, the, the, the hatred towards Meghan has found a very fertile ground in, 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 in social media, where women, many of them middle-aged, conservative, and deeply invested in the royal family, um, take to platforms like Twitter to spread lies and vitriol. These women have become a powerful online force, dedicating their time to attacking Megan and defending Kate. It's a, it's a curious phenomenon. 
these these women who should logically align with feminism or 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 with feminist values instead engage in a kind of mob mentality reinforcing harmful stereotypes and spreading falsehoods about another woman their motivations are are complex i would say right because some 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 feel a deep loyalty to the to the monarchy and see megan as a destabilizing force others might project their own frustrations whether that is personal societal or political onto a public figure who represents change right and change that they are uncomfortable with megan a biracial independent american stands as a symbol of modernity and disruption which can be threatening to those who cling to tradition but there's also something deeper at play right and it's that what 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 i think is an internalized misogyny many of these women have grown up in societies that um uh uh overtly right or uh, in in a sort of subtle way right <laughs> as i said so sometimes overtly and sometimes very, very very subtle taught them that a woman's worth is tied to her ability to fit into prescribed roles right demure quiet supportive and never challenging the men in power megan's refusal to confirm to these expectations right it stirs up something uncomfortable within them the the puzzling hatred for megan mirrors another equally confounding phenomena the unwavering support many women have shown for the that former president that is running again um for elect um to be elected president of the united states despite his long history of misogynistic comments actions and even court ruling against him for as a misconduct during his presidency he consistently degraded women called them names yet many of his staunch supporters were women particularly those from conservative um backgrounds or often um from rural backgrounds much like the women who attack Meghan Markle his female supporters defend his actions don't play in his misogyny and even attack other women who called him out for for that kind of behavior now the big question you and I are asking is why why and what what I what I found in what i've read and 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 the research that it basically boils down to a toxic form of loyalty to systems of power many of these women grew up in environments where men held the reins and power dynamics were rigidly defined supporting that man despite his misogyny allows them to stay in a, a, a alignment with the values they were raised on where men's authority remain unchallenged and women who step outside their designated roles are punished for these women attacking other women whether it's Hillary Clinton, Meghan Markle or feminist in general is part of upholding that 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 status quo 
Now, you might say, well, I, I grew up in a similar environment, but I'm not like that. And I would ask you, well, why are you not? And you're not because, I'm going to make an assumption here, you wanted to break that chain. You wanted to break that unhealthy legacy. You had questions. You wanted more for yourself. You saw the potential in you. What's particularly tragic about both of these groups? The women who attack Megan and the women who support that man is that their misogyny will ultimately harm them. By perpetrating these harmful narratives, they help sustain a culture that limits their own freedom, their loyalty to a system that devalues women is built on a foundation that will inevitably crumble, leaving them vulnerable to the very misogyny they wield as, 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 as a weapon. In both cases, these women believe they are defending something greater than themselves whether it's a monarchy, a country, a way of life. But the systems they defend have historically sidelined women, reduced their agency, and punished them for stepping outside acceptable norms. By aligning themselves with these structures, they only reinforce their own subjugation. One striking example that I think illustrates this dynamic so well is found in The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. We read, we read it in um, high school and the series is out there. I've seen, um, I think, I haven't seen all, all of it, um, all the seasons. I think I, I watched until season three or something like that. Um, but in this dystopian world where women Women helped men rise to this absolute power, believing that their loyalty and adherence to the oppressive regime would protect them from the worst abuses. So if we take the character of um, Serena Joy, I mean, sorry, for those of you who haven't read the book or watched the series, I'm so sorry. Um, for those of you who have, you'll know what I'm talking about, right? Y you take that character of Serena Joy, once a powerful voice advocating for the very system that would later strip her of all autonomy, quickly learned that misogyny spares no one. Despite their early alliance with the men who enforce these patriar pa pa patriarchal rule rules and laws, these women soon found themselves oppressed by the same structures they had helped build. Serena, once a revered figure in her role as a commander's wife, ends up shackled by the very system she thought would elevate her. In your transgressions. I did what I thought was necessary. Of course you did. This isn't your fault. It's mine. It was unfair for me to burden you with so much responsibility. Now we must make amends. Amends? Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. 
Ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Friend, please. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. This parallel the, 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 the women who attack Meghan Markle or support misogynistic leaders like, like the, the former president, believing that their compliance with these harmful structures will shield them. In the end, the same system of oppression that they promote will turn against them, just as it did in The, hand, hand, in the Handmaid's Tale. Proving that no woman is immune to the consequences of internalized misogyny. And we see this also in race. It's the same thing. When you would have, in, in the times of, 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 of slavery, when they would elevate one of the slaves and say, okay, well, you're in charge now. We'll build a little hut and you, you now don't sleep with the, you sleep in a little hut. You have your own little section or you can sleep in the big house at the back or something that person that was elevated then in turn would treat the slaves worse worse than the master ever did but when push comes to shove and shove comes to push And they thought they were better. They weren't. Because when they thought Master would defend them if something would, were to happen. No, Master didn't defend them. Master loved what you did to your people to get, to get more crops, to get more, more this or that. The irony in it all. The parallels between the women who support that former president and those who vilified Meghan Markle are stark. Both groups are deeply invested in upholding traditional structures of power that ultimately don't serve their interest. The question we must ask ourselves as observers and participants in this culture is why this cycle of internalized misogyny persist and what can be done to 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 break it women who attack other women for stepping outside traditional roles whether in politics or royalty must confront the reality that the same misogyny that they will will in time be used against them. It's a lesson that history has taught us time and time again. But one that must be learned, it seems anew, every generation. Okay, so I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Some of it was a little bit um, heavy, but at the same time, I wanted to 
um, bring to you a, a, an understanding of the archetype of the Meghan Markle hater, right? And it's typically as demonstrated these, these, when I concentrated on the women, um, these women who uh, maintain these structures and um, believe, really do believe that these, these policies are, or um, uh, punishments of these structures and so will not apply to them. And we see the same thing in, in um, politics. Many women who have supported and still support, um, even today, knowing that the autonomy of their own bodies is being taken away, they don't think it's going to really affect them until it does. They don't think that the person they're married to or the person that they're, they're supporting is, is going to turn on them because they have elevated that person. They have helped them. In many cases, the women are far more brilliant, more intelligent than the man is. And, you know, she becomes subjugated. But anyways, that, that is finished. <laughs> I want to say thank you very much for uh, all of the messages, um, the comments. As I said, I love read, reading them. And... It's just been brilliant, some of the stuff. Thank you very, very, very much. It, it really takes away any lingering um, uh, poison of messages that you folks don't, don't, don't see, but, 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 but I see. And they're nasty. <laughs> they're, they're quite nasty. But... At the same time, I, 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 look, I'm, I'm not here to save anyone. I'm not here to do any, any of that stuff. But I come with an understanding of what pain is, suffering, and how people manifest that in different ways, rather than take, taking responsibility and trying to do something humanity for some reason always tries to find the easiest um, exit to what could be quite profound and complicated um, matters anyways not to get profound again um, Sarah Richardson I love your comment in your message I read it a few times and it just brought yeah, your message was absolutely brilliant. Thank you so very much. I read it a couple of times and it just brought such joy to my, to my puppy heart. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to try now to demonstrate, as you requested, um, how to um, uh, contribute to the channel. So hopefully crossing my fingers and my everything, making sure I do a uh, no okay job trying to demonstrate here, okay? And thank you once again, Sarah. Okay, so here, here we go in regards to um, some, of the, some of the options to support the channel financially. So you get to any of the, the episodes and let's say you're watching this episode yes, right yes, now, yes, right? So, Let's say you, you're watching this. Um, one of the ways to support the channel is becoming a member. So if you want to become a member, you press on join right over here. And it, membership has two tiers. And basically, it's a monthly membership. So uh, YouTube takes out the money automatically on a monthly basis. Um, to support the channel. I think YouTube takes like 30% of that and, and the rest goes to the channel. So that is one way and that's a monthly support. And if you would like to make, let's say, a one-time donation um, ever so often, then you could use anywhere you see, there's three dots here. So if you don't see this symbol that says thanks with a heart, um, anywhere displayed on the toolbar or so, sort of around here, look for it. It could be hidden in the three dots. 
So what this is, this is what they call like a super sticker or super thanks. So it's a donation, basically a one-time donation thing. And you can decide, okay, I want to donate two, two, two dollars or two pounds or whatever. And if you want to donate more, you just slide. It's a sliding kind of feature. And it goes up, I think, by five each, each time. Okay. So those, those, and you can, you can, you can write, write a message also. So those are the two ways in which to support um, the channel financially. So either through the membership, so it's a monthly, um, sort of monthly membership fee, or through one-time um, super stickers or super thanks. Great. And other than that. Um, subscribing, sharing, giving thumbs up. I think it helps. That's what they tell us. <laughs> um, that's what the algorithm tells us. And that's what YouTube sends message all the time saying, do this, do that. Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you telling your memberships this? Why don't you blah, blah, blah. So um, thank you so much. I appreciate that so much, Sarah. And um, I hope you all enjoyed today. <sighs> we'll talk soon again, okay? Take care of yourselves. Be kind, 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 kind to yourselves. Kind to your loved ones. And to those fastidious strangers that sometimes just can get on our nerves. It's their best to be kind. You never know. You might be the only kind thing they have witnessed all day, all week, all month. Take care. Ciao, ciao. Until we speak again. <laughs>